one of the wee tunes from the new album. In fact, I believe the title track of the new album, Angels Behold and Jim Sorediak is my guest tonight. And, uh, you know, Jim, we're going back, as I said at the beginning of the programme, it was about 123 years ago, I think, <laughs> uh, when I was doing radio. I was learning to do radio. I'm still learning every day at uh, the University of Alberta. And you were the very first interview person that I had. And I was very nervous uh, having a big superstar like you and here we are all those years later welcome to the program <laughs> well i'm it's, what a pleasure to be here again thank you and you know what i was very nervous too because that was one of my first interviews and um how did it go did it go well it was brilliant it was, was it brilliant thank you um, it's perfect <laughs> it was fantastic uh in fact i think what is it they always say critically acclaimed oh yeah yeah, yeah i know that term yeah, yeah it was uh, did you not promise me fame and fortune th- uh, 35 years ago or 135 years ago now i it, did <laughs> and look look see what happened how many albums is it now well this is number five but uh i was just calculating last day that there were about four or five cassettes i don't know mm-hmm. how many people out there remember cassettes i've actually got a cassette and i've got some lps as well right and there uh, was an lp so in the 80s and 90s so right, right. Yeah. so in, in total uh, i guess you know there might be 10 recordings mm-hmm. or something like that but i think of the five cds as official recordings somebody said to me today um why you've got jim Sidia on your show he's not he's not scarish <laughs> and i said no he's not but to be serious and i've said this before this program Although it's the Celtic show, it's more about the Celtic spirit than anything. And you've got, you have got quite a Celtic spirit because you've got, you've got this great sort of uh, work ethic that you just keep at it. You go your own way and you made up your mind many, many years ago not to follow uh, the big, big scene to do what you wanted to do and, and, and do your own thing. I admire that a lot. Was that a hard choice to make? I think at times it uh, was, um, uh, it, you know, in retrospect, looking back, there were some decisions that perhaps could have been made where I could have been a touring musician and, you know, carried on in that realm and perhaps uh, achieved uh, more notoriety, so to speak. But I guess it was, uh, you know, basically life that uh, took me in a different direction. I, I, I had uh, the farm uh, initially to run with my parents and then as they passed on, uh, I continued with that, and life on the road just wouldn't have fit. You know, I have a, a young man who, uh, a young son who is now uh, 17, so uh, I really would have, you know, missed uh, a lot of his growth and stuff like that. So, uh, in essence, I guess, you know, and it was a choice because I'm more of a homebody than a, a road kind of musician guy. You know, I'm not a. It's just probably I, I probably made a better decision this this way. That that didn't really fit my lifestyle. When, when uh, you're recording, you record everything at home and you're yeah, still using I do. a lot of the older technology and I'm getting still, these fantastic yeah. sounds. I'm still using a spring and elastic, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think part of that is perhaps I, I'm too s- uh, stubborn, too obstinate to move into the, the computer age, I guess. Eh? But you know what? It works for me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it kind of uh, grounds me into more of the song, the music, so that the technology kind of is, a, you know, a secondary element that doesn't override me. But it may be time to move into that. I'm very happy uh, because a, a couple of weeks ago I walked into the studio and on my desk there was a wee teaser CD of uh, introducing us to this new album that was coming out. And I got the album last week and I've been listening to it. And uh, tell us about this uh, this new record, Angels Behold, and about the inspiration behind it. The uh, inspiration is, uh, I think, primarily from that initial song, uh, in, uh, Angels Behold. Uh, it uh, uh, was conceived a number of um, New Year's Eves ago, and the gist of the song is really to wish everyone a happy life, to have their dreams come true and uh you know obviously that doesn't happen for you know that's just it's impossible eh? but anyway that was sort of the 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 umbrella under which all the other tunes uh came in under and uh in essence there's another tune uh, that uh, that 
uh, it's got a lot of sentimental value in, in that uh, it was written for my mom after her departure. So the angels theme was there in a way. And, um, and then there are a number, of, uh, I guess there are about two tunes that are tunes way back from the cassettes, which I wanted to revisit and improve upon. So uh, that, uh, th th there, and also a couple of instrumentals that have shown up that... We've got a, a CD release party that's coming up on... Uh, now, th this is a lovely wee sort of way to spend. Uh, I love what you've done with this. It's on a Sunday afternoon, right? Yeah, we're getting old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be up too late. <laughs> Especially on a winter's night. But right. it's lovely because it's sort of getting... Uh, December the 1st it is, and it's at a wee place called The Confectionery on 109th Avenue and 127th Street. It's right across from Westmount Community Hall in Edmonton. And the audience will be treated to a 45-minute set of songs, uh, some from the CD and some uh, some new ones with uh, Jamie Philp and John Toll, your pals, followed uh, by a chance to visit and chat. It's it's by donation. It's uh, it's a wee cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit on a Sunday yeah, afternoon. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's sort of turned into a bit of a, a CD release social, I guess. Tea party. Just, yeah, we might not uh -huh. even play. Uh, we might just uh, have tea and, and, and chat or whatever. Eh? But I'm really uh, proud and honoured to have my good friends, uh, John Toll and Jamie Philp, uh, join me. Uh, we were actually just rehearsing uh, this afternoon and talking about uh, how long we've played together. And I don't think a lot of trios uh, have have uh, spanned three decades. It, I'm sure something, some wedge or something happens in the middle there that breaks that apart. So well, I, I remember going way back to the early days of the Film and Folk Club, and before that. Uh, to different little gigs you did at the theatre there, the, not the, the Chinook the, Theatre, the Chinook Theatre, right, yeah. and coming to see you there and uh, with a band and the whole right, thing. Right, yeah, we talked about that as well. And uh, we're we going back to the early eighties there. <laughs> we are, yeah. yeah. And in fact, we talked about how we could say we opened for Katie Lang because Katie Lang followed us at the Chinook Theatre. That's wow. our our uh, our fame, I guess, so to speak. Eh. Mm -hmm. But anyway, really happy to have John and Jamie there. Uh, wonderful, wonderfully. Uh, accomplished musicians, beautiful people, and uh, it'd be a lot of, always a lot of fun to play with them. We were talking earlier on, just off mic, when you got here, we were talking about radio play and how difficult it is uh, for an artist to, to get radio play this, these days. I mean, there's so many people out there putting out music and everything like that, but the internet for you is turning out, uh, there's a, a strange wee twist that's happening, isn't there? It is indeed. It's, uh, you know, because I don't tour, uh, you, you don't build audiences that way. So radio play or some kind of play is vital. And uh, the Internet has actually been quite a blessing because uh, not only is there YouTube where you can, you know, post your videos and your songs and have some interaction. Uh, there are now many Internet uh, radio stations and uh, I've been having a, a, a lot of success uh, getting airplay everywhere and having, um, you know, interaction with people from all over the world who like, you know, some of the songs or whatever. Eh? Uh, so um, it's uh, been very rewarding and in a way allows a person like me to continue my creative lifestyle so, or life, so to speak, uh, without having the musical or the, the musician lifestyle. So, um, yeah, I think it's a marvelous thing. There's a lot of people out there, though, that take artists' music that's, without asking yeah. and without paying. That is the downside, is that basically it's very difficult, I, I think, from my experience to make uh, a living selling recordings. Uh, you know, uh, often you might have something streamed somewhere for three cents or or whatever, another two cent payment. It doesn't add up very, mm -hmm. very much. It's sort of hard to buy groceries, eh? Do you think that's going to change in the future? Or do you think that's just the, the way it's going to be until the next sort well, of new yeah. thing comes around? Well, I'm not the smartest thinker, but uh, I don't think it's going to improve for a while. <laughs> How can people get a hold of your CD? They can, if you live in, in the Edmonton area, uh, head out to a beautiful uh, CD store, record store uh, called Blackbird Music on White Avenue. They've got it. And, of course, it'll be, it, uh, if it's not up already, it'll be up on iTunes and all those characters out there, CD Baby. So anywhere on the Internet, you can either buy the download or buy the physical CD, which That's is another great thing in regards to musical distribution. It used to be you had to bring all those records out to record stores all across the country. Now, I mean, it's sad for, for record the record store business, but... Uh, 
Uh, Did you have to reevaluate how much, uh, you know, because these things are changing? And I don't know this. Are artists doing this now? Are they sort of reevaluating, uh, like when you purchase the actual units, uh, you, you know, because of the digital download thing? For us here in radio, it's fantastic because the record companies, they, they, what they do is before you used to, you would get stuff in the post and everything like that. Now they'll send you a digital download and then you can get a physical copy if you want it. But when when you're going to the, the manufacturer to get your discs made and things, are you calculating that or did you even think about that? Um, I have, yeah, some kind of calculation in my, in my brain as to how many physical CDs I do need to make. And uh, I've almost... Uh, Actually, I've adopted another technique where I can almost make them by the each, so to speak. Uh, so, uh, the custom made. Well, pretty well, yeah, uh -huh. pretty well. Yeah. I think that'd be a great way to go. You can, and I know Dougie McLean does that. Was oh, that can, right? You can actually. Well, what he does is he he does great thing, and he's been doing this for years. Um, and he told me this. Uh, he did a series of concerts in the states, and what you do is you buy uh, a code number at the beginning of the concert <clears throat> and you can uh, actually fill out a wee form and you can put in there, you know, a dedication to somebody for a wee birthday and he goes through all this before the show and he'll look through it and he'll, and he'll make up a wee list and say, it's, you know, would you sing Caledonia for my mum's birthday mm -hmm. and he'll do that and then 24 hours later you can go and you can download that and it's up there for 24 or 12 hours or something and you can download, you've bought that song Oh, and it's great. got the dedication in it and the whole thing. It's like a wee custom made that's great. LP you can get, you know. And he he was he's been doing that for many, many years now. Mm, very ingenious. That's uh, yeah, that's smart. We've got a lot of good things like that going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got the, the C D release event and then when are we gonna see you again through Alberta? Uh, I don't know. I hope we piece together another bunch of gigs uh, over the next over the winter months and uh, yeah, I guess I'll just see how it goes. I'll see if there's any response. Fantastic. Maybe nobody wants us. No, they do. <laughs> Thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure to have you. And always when I ask you, you, you say yes right away. Well, and, thank you. Uh, you always show up nice and early <laughs> with your <laughs> hair brushed and your face washed. <laughs> well, thank you. And Andy, you know, uh, again, I just spoke about our rehearsal just before this. And we were all talking about how marvelous you've been in your support. Uh, not only, uh, well, we'll speak for ourselves, but uh, for musicians all over the with the province and the country, well, the city and, and the country. So thank you very much. From, it's from my a, pleasure. From I just love my pals. Simple as that. Well, that's very nice. You that's know, great. Thank good you. to have you. Thank you. What are you going to play for us now? You know what? Uh, the favorite songs are always the newest ones. So this is not on the CD. This is a new song. This will be on the next CD. And it's called The End of Summer. Jim Sudidiak on CKUA. <laughs> Across the face of the moon 